I'm going to talk a bit about um, uh, basically kind of my, my experience with um, uh, CFFI using that uh, to, to call into C libraries, etc. Um, my background is kind of uh, related to this is kind of uh, a long time ago um, while I was still at university I wrote uh, a, a, a Python extension module um, that called into libqhull, uh, used, some, used some NumPy stuff as well. Um, I done did a little bit on Hotshot which is kind of an old uh, profiler that used to be in the standard library as well and then like most recently really and most actively I, I, I've, I work on PSI as well which is a an extension module to to um, look at uh, processes on an operating system. So, so all, all your running processes, etc., all the information that you kind of get out of PS um, normally, and, and and some more kind of, um, and that kind of strongly biased me to, uh, towards what I think is a is a good solution to 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 call into um, C, C libraries, etc. In for, for one thing, you know, um, on a lot, um, it, it's it's a very heterogeneous environment. So it's kind of on, on Linux, a lot of stuff you can read from text files. On other platforms like Solaris and X, you, you have to read binary structures that live in slash proc, etc. Um, so, so, and and it's a system calls as well. They, they really change depending on on the platform you're on. Are you on a, on an ILP um, 32 system on an LP 64 system? Uh, it's kind of the, the, those sort of um, things re really, really mean that it has to be uh, on the API level, um, and um, so, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in this talk. I, I will be concentrating just on the API um, level of access because there are solutions like C types that do ABI level um, <coughs> access as well to C stuff, um, and one of the main things as well is, is the um, my experience really is. Because if if you write in the C Python API, which is kind of the API that you can co sort of in C create a, a Python object and, and do stuff with it, it's it's really hard. There, there's a lot of stuff you need to do, and there's a lot of stuff you need to keep track of, and it's very very easy to make mistakes. Um, just creating a new integer, for example, in Python and, and, and passing it around, you, you can mistake mistakes, and you can have reference leaks, etc. And ba basically. Like my, my, my conclusion from that is like, the more you can do actually in Python code, the better it is because you shouldn't have to do that by hand because it, it, it can, you know, it, it really should be able to be automated. Um, so the more you can do in Python, it's, it's kind of the better as well. Um, so, yeah, these are sort of the, the common, I guess, um, ways of uh, calling into C um, modules. Um, so extension modules is kind of right from the beginning. It's basically the, the, the way that, you know, the, the C Python um, kind of works internally. Um, um, then C types is, um, got, got added to the standard library quite a few releases ago. Um, and uh, but C the problem with C types is that it's it's on an ABI level, so you can't you can't use anything compile time, um, and and that's really limiting. So so uh, ABIs kind of tend to break more often than APIs, and it's also it means you have to really check on each platform kind of what the ABI there is and if you, if, if you then trying to run on a different platform you have to figure this out and trying to do that without um, getting um, a core dump or something like that is, uh, may also be a bit challenging. Um, Cyton and Swig, um, I have to admit I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning those because I kind of feel I have to but I don't know that much about them. Um, Cyton is sort of, I, I, I thought um, that Cyton was originally at least kind of primarily aimed at optimizing like a function that you then want to kind of get uh, compiled rather than actually interacting with C libraries. I think you can actually interact with C libraries as well. Um, Swig is uh, kind of much older and heavy weight I think and it's kind of mostly aimed at C++ uh, libraries. Um, not entirely sure but the um, Basically, the, the one that caught my eye, my eye when, when, when it got released and, and as, as it was um, being developed was uh, CFFI um, which is uh, created by um, basically kind of spawned out of the um, PyPy project, um, and that seems to, you know, have a lot of promises that I um, kind of like. Um, for context, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of show the problems that you have if you're trying to do this entirely by hand, um, basically with, with the C Python API. Uh, and essentially, like there's there's a lot of boilerplate you kind of have to do. 
uh, just to create a module, you have to kind of populate a whole bunch of structures and there's like tons of fields that you know may be useful, maybe not. Um, you have to dig around a lot and it's just like, you know, uh, compared to just in Python code, just create a file and you have a module kind of thing. Um, functions are not too difficult. I mean, there's some, some stuff involved with passing the arguments from it. Um, but otherwise, that's not too bad. But creating classes, if you, if you want to create a class, uh, it's like, again, lots and lots of structures and lots of fields that you have to go and figure out what, what's going on. Um, uh, and the, the other thing with classes as well is that there, there still is a difference between a built-in class, which is actually just a type, really, uh, versus a, a class that you write, um, write in Python. Um, you can see that just by, uh, if, if you take the um, base object and create an instance of that, you can't assign an attribute to it on a class, and an empty class that you make with, with in, in Python code, you can assign an attribute to that. So there are still subtle differences, even if you kind of go, go through the whole roundabout way of creating classes, etc. Um, and yeah, the main thing is there's, there's so many corner cases that you have to um, take care of and, and think about and, and test for, etc. Um, and the, the reference counting being, you know, one, one of the main things that, that you will time and time, even when you're very careful, you, you will find bugs in your own code that um, leak references. So, uh, yeah, there, there, there are ways of trying to find out whether you're leaking references, etc. But it's, you know, it might be in a, in, in, a, in a failure path or something like that. Just to kind of give you an example of, of what, what's involved in, in the using the C Python API, this, all this code does is create a tuple of three items long with three times the number 42 in. Um, but the, the amount of stuff you need to do is like, first you need to create a new tuple object. Uh, then if that, if that fails, you kind of, um, yeah, that's still simple enough to bail out. D then you have to go and it, um, pop populate it. So you, you have to th create three new objects, even though they're three times the same object kind of thing. Um, you, could, you could just increase the reference count of that same object if you really want it, because they'll probably end up being the same object, but they're fine from long stuff. Um, but at that point, if you then fail, you have to remember to decrease the reference count on your tuple object, because otherwise you're going to le leak that object um, around. Um, and then at the end, you do a despite tuple set item for, for each object again. And at that point, you know, you, you just created an object, so you create a new object, you, you've got a reference to one, you're passing it somewhere else. Normally you have to kind of decrease your reference count there in the C Python API, but no, PyTuple set item is kind of a, a, special, um, a special function in the API, so you have to go and remember that, that, uh, that it doesn't, um, that for PyTuple set item, you don't have to go and increase uh, or de play with the reference count. Um, and then there's the you know, difference between, uh, there's a variation of pi tuple set item, which is a, in camel case rather than in uppercase, the set item part. You have to go and figure out what to, I mean, basically it's, there's lots of, yeah, there's lots to go on uh, when you kind of think about that. So um, looking at CFI, which is kind of, um, like CFI um, brands itself or, or tries to advertise itself like with, with these kind of, um, f features, which is basically they say, you know, you shouldn't have to learn anything new. You know Python, you know C. Um, that's it. Nothing to learn about um, strange APIs or, or, or etc. Uh, and you don't have to do any of the bookkeeping, and that's a, a major win in, in, in my book anyway. Um, it allows you to work both on the uh, binary interface as well as the programming interface. Um, I'm only going to look at the uh, programming interface because the binary interface I'm not that interested in really um, and uh, another very nice thing is that it basically supports Python as well as um, PyPy um, so I think it's PyPy's preferred way of, of calling it C libraries because um, they, they can optimize it better than, um, than using normal extension modules which they have to do lots of emulation for. Um, looking like at the very basic example I mean the example is quite um, silly so, so the open function call you know, give, give you back a file descriptor for a file that you opened. Um, in CFFI, you, you kind of, um, so you have to create this FFI instance uh, before you can do anything in CFFI, basically. And then you have to declare the functions that you're going to use. So that you do in the CDEF um, uh, function call. 
and in practice you'll end up with a quite a lot of um, text in there. That's basically what you get from reading the man page. Uh, you can copy paste it or you can get it from the header file or something like that. And it's kind of, um, yeah, it, it, I, I think it's not optimal, but I can see why, why, why it's done that way, because it's very hard to pass um, header files natively. Um, but, but it means you have, so, so you first have to declare all functions that you're going to use. Uh, and then when you're working on the, and that's the same for the ABI and API level, um, but when you're working on the API level then, uh, the second step is to create a, um, an extension module, is essentially what, what this uh, ffi.verify call does, is it, it, it will invoke the, the C compiler and it will create an extension module that with the, the function calls that you um, wanted on. Um, so the code you pass into the verify bit, uh, you always kind of need to put your headers in there. And the headers are just, again, from the man page or wherever you got it from kind of thing. Um, and that will actually be included in, in the extension module that uh, um, CFFI compiles, um, which allows you to do a couple of uh, more tricky uh, things um, because that's actually C code that will end up being compiled. Uh, other than that, CFI does basically everything for you. Um, now, now you can so you assign this, this, the result of a um, verify to to, uh, to another variable, something uh, lib or something like that, and you can just call uh, a function to it. And notice basically how the return value and the arguments are just plain Python objects. Um, the, the, the most ba like the basic Python objects like n numbers uh, and strings uh, will just uh, CFFI will, will take care of those and, and it will translate those. Uh, I'm explicitly using a byte string um, because uh, so byte strings will get um, uh, converted to um, uh, a pointer to char. Uh, if you pass in Unicode strings, CFFI will convert that to W char T. Um, but yeah, you have to be you know you have to pick one of the two kind of thing. Um, it doesn't implicitly encode or decode. Um, Integers can be just um, zero. And the other thing that um, you get on, on, on your FFI instance is the FFI that oh no, um, uh, va variable. Basically, af after calling that, it will have the oh no value of, of, of your thread. Um, so so you, can, you can really easily create uh, ex proper exceptions with OS that stir error. And FFI dot oh no, basically that's the the syntax to create kind of um, two argument syntax to environment errors, um, which OS is a subclass of. So, so that's kind of the very basic kind of I want to call a library function. And if you know if that sort of stuff you need to do, you're going to have an easy time, and and it, it solves a lot of the problems. Five minutes. Five minutes. All right. Um, okay. So I'll try and speed up a little bit. <laughs> um, so, so integer constants um, is, is something like the flags argument actually to the same function call. Uh, you can just kind of use these three dots and you'll see there's a few times CFI. You can use those three dots. Uh, and CFI will figure out um, for integer constants at least what they are. So you can now uh, use, use the integer constant. The rest of this is exactly the same basically. Um, CF, but in the compiler step, CFI figures out what the values are of those things. Uh, and you can go and do this. Um, Allocating arrays gets a little bit more interesting. Um, this is the read function call. Again, you have this already in os.read, by the way, um, just like I'm using os.open for the previous function call now. Um, uh, basically, yeah, ju just re reads from a, from a file descriptor kind of thing. Um, the main thing here is the ffi.new um, item, uh, the fu function call, really. And that, that creates a, you can, ffi.new, you can call that with, with pointers or, or arrays, basically. And CFFI will create you a new, what it calls a C data object. Uh, and the C data object um, is kind of uh, a zeroed block of, of, of um, C data that you can reference in, in Python. And it keeps the reference count. So, so it kind of, um, it uses the py Python, it kind of links that into the Python garbage collection, which is very nice. Uh, you can also, um, you can also hook up, like if, if you get, if you have a library call that um, re returns some C data object kind of thing, um, and and you uh, and you you're responsible for freeing it. You can again 
uh, you can attach uh, a, an action to that uh, for the garbage collector to, to go and do that. And, and once you're using that, it's kind of nice and natively to use in, in, in Python code. Um, so, so, that's, so, so you can create basically an array. You can pass it into, into your function uh, call. And then the other thing here is the um, ffi.string bit uh, is kind of a helper function. You could manually iterate over the characters in that string and figure it all out. But it's ffi.string is a helper function. Basically, it reads the C string to, to, to the first null character and, and gives you that as a Python string back. Um, tied nefs is where it gets a little bit more ugly, uh, in my experience. Um, Basically, for this example here, um, the type def I've done there will work. It will compile. It will even run. Um, and it will return my, my UID of, of, of the user I'm running this as. But it's wrong. Um, and there is nothing that, that will, will, will warn me for it. So, so type def is a little painful. Normally, this, I, mean, I, I think this is kind of part of the API kind of level. And, and the C, pro, C, C preprocessor passes all your header files and figures out you know, what the type defs are. You, you're kind of responsible for doing that yourself. So you, you, put a, you have to do the type def yourself in, in the cdef section uh, and then just see what happens. Um, in this case, it works, but it's kind of not really correct because the correct one is on this platform anyway, unsigned in. Um, the other thing is, is that even, even is that correct? I don't know. Um, it seems correct because but on the other hand, uh, I could have declared it as unsigned long, and everything would have been fine as well, because on this platform, int and longs were the same, uh, same size. Um, so which one was it? Well, I don't know. That's OK, as long as you're doing it on one platform. If you're trying to go cross-platform, that's going to cause even more pain, and you're going to have to kind of figure it out manually on each platform that you want to support. Um, so it's sort of losing the abstraction of the API level a little bit there. Um, but the way I kind of work around it is basically by putting this whole, um, uh, an extra function. I declare an extra function check types in the CDEF, and, and you can just include that kind of in the verify call. Um, I basically create a structure with that type in, uh, and I check, basically two things I check is, uh, one, is the size actually matching? And the second thing, does the sign actually match? So by doing memset on, on the structure and basically putting all ones in, in that structure, uh, I can then figure out, you know, I expect this to be unsigned, I expect this to be signed. So it's a bit hacky, um, but you can figure out if your sign is wrong, basically. Um, and then this is, uh, um, sorry, this is like continues at the bottom, kind of run out of space. Uh, it's, yeah, just a Python code to kind of give nice errors out for that. So you can sort of verify this stuff. Uh, you can also generate things, um, so because you don't actually have to pass in. A, you, you can generate the string that you pass into CDEF uh, and into verify. So I, I just create the dictionary of the type defs, and I, I have some code to generate that sort of uh, checking code and all that. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, Structures is, is the last thing I'll uh, cover if I still have time. I don't know. Um, there's no one here to tell me not. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, structures is actually, it, that's kind of quite nice. You still have to copy um, them, them from somewhere. Um, but the fields you don't care about, you can just, you don't have to declare even. You, you can just use the, the three dots uh, in there. And you just have to declare the, the fields that you care about. And see if I will behind the scenes do some si size off and offset off kind of operations to figure out where these are. Um, so the rest of this is kind of pretty much stuff we've talked about before. So uh, very quickly, second uh, thing on st uh, structures is if you like, in, in this case, there's an example on Solaris, I think, um, where, where, where you know there, there's a certain array of uh, a string basically in, in the structure. And it's declared as a certain size. Again, you can you don't have to worry about what the size is. Uh, CFFI will again use size off and figure out what the size is. So you never have to figure out what this uh, macro that uh, in, in in the header files normally would be. So that's sort of um, fairly nice um, alleviation. Um, so sort of my personal conclusion is um, yes. Um, it's definitely a good tool. I, I, I think I, I, I certainly prefer it over, over using CPython API itself by hand. Um, th there is still some, I, I think th there is still so, some API level kind of um, problems, certainly with portability. And you end up, you I think you, you, you end up kind of generating lots of the strings that you pass into CDEF and verify. 
and making that cross uh, portable across platforms, normally the uh, C preprocessor would take care of that. Uh, and you kind of have to figure that out yourself. And certainly if conditions, conditionals kind of come into um, uh, effect, etc., there, there, there is a little bit. But overall, I think the, the, the benefits that you get from it, um, to, to me at least, uh, are, are certainly outweigh the, um, um, the pain that you have to do for, from um, using C Python API by hand. So yeah, um, I think that was it. Thanks for listening. Um, Sorry, is this passing of the header file? It, it's passing, well, we, you know, I'm, I'm declaring a connection to a header file, so is it doing that every time I'm on my program? No, um, so, so uh, CFFI will, if, if you just run this uh, on, on your own develop, development uh, machine, CFFI will, will cache that in, in, uh, in, in the Py, um, done the PyCache cache directory, and it will basically sa save the extension module there, and it will check is any sources have modified and take some hashes of it and update them if not. And if you're distributing uh, CFFI modules, um, that's basically, uh, you can hook this in into distutils or setup tools uh, and, and build the extension module and you can ship the extension module. And th basically for, for production, that's what you do. You'd build the binary thing and ship the um, extension module. And then it's just an extension module and doesn't run every time. So is it possible to create a Python class and sort of associate C functions with uh, functions within that Python class? Do you see what I'm trying to say? Uh, not really. So, so, so you, you have to create the structure in, you have to f fill the structure basically and pass that to f functions, C, C functions? Uh, yes, so you would like initialize the function. In yeah, function. so I think, that's the, I think that's the same as uh, using ffi.new, you can create this you know, you've declared your structure or the shape of your structure that you want, uh, you, and you use ffi.new to, to, um, to, to create uh, an array of them, if, even if the array is just one. Um, and then you can fill in the, the fields, and then you can pass it to another C function, I think. Is that? Yep, that's good. That's all yeah. Can you call in the other direction as well? Can you call from C to? Python. I think there is something like in the uh, Armin who wrote it is nodding. Uh, yes. Um, uh, yeah. There, there, there is a callback in, in the API in the documentation somewhere. I've never done it myself, but it's the CFI documentation covers it somewhere.